What's poppin', man? It's T.O. Double. This is the 12th episode of the MK Podcast, you dig? And I'm led to call this episode, Keep Hope Alive. Keep Hope Alive, man. Now, I know y'all heard that before, but what, what are we saying when we say that? Uh, faith and hope, they're living things, or at least they're supposed to be. But then, they could be dead things. For example, the scripture says, faith without works is dead, right? So that implies that faith is supposed to be alive. But the question is, how do you keep hope alive? I'm using hope and faith um, together. How do we keep hope alive? Well, you keep it alive the same way you keep anything else alive. You got to feed it. You got to feed your hope and you got to feed your faith. Your faith um, is much like. um, uh, All right, let me just put it like this. When we talk about your heart. And we talk about your spirit. Faith is a spiritual thing. So is hope. But I, I kind of want to focus on faith. Faith is spiritual. It comes out of your spirit. Faith don't come out of your brain, which means your logical, the logical calculated part of your uh, being. Because faith, you know, if you're going to use your logical uh, calculated mind to do some of the things that you're supposed to do for God... Did you know you're going to have a hard time? Because the things that God is calling you to do, they're they're not designed to fit in your brain. They're designed to fit in your spirit. Because your brain, which calculates everything and which tries to reason everything, it can't fit the plan of God in it because it don't make sense. So God's word and his plan and the things that he's telling you is designed to go inside of your spirit. Because your brain can't handle the plan, but you know who can handle the plan? your spirit, your heart, you have a heart to believe with. And what I mean is your heart has the capacity to believe the word of God. See, when God is asking you to believe that somebody uh, was crucified and rose from the dead, he's not asking you to believe that with your brain because your brain is going to say, number one, when people die, they just dead. Number two, that don't make sense. Number three, that just don't make sense, right? But God is not aiming at your head. He aiming at your heart. This Bible is not aimed at your head. If you if you try to come to this Bible and you try to figure it out with logic and reason and your calculated methods, a person that tries to do that, no wonder they're not going to believe because it's not for your brain, as we said. It's for your heart. So going back to the concept of feeding your faith, your faith has to be fed in order for it to be strong just like your body if you go on a fast for seven days there's gonna be certain things that your body can't do certain things that you can't pick up you're not gonna be able to move no furniture after you done fasted for seven days at least nothing heavy why because you haven't fed your your body uh with the um proper um nutrition that it needs to be strong well even so is it with faith There are certain things spiritually that you can't do if you're not eating God's word. And when I say eating, I mean listening to it, um, rehearsing it, meditating it, getting it in your spirit. Because the word of God, if you get it in your spirit, it'll give you a capacity to believe something that's impossible. Now, I want to kind of give you the reason why faith is important to have. Um, I'm going to use a natural example. I don't know if this is all the way spiritual. But I do know the concept is spiritual and it requires faith. So I want you to imagine the year is 1600. All right. Um, There's no cars. There's no planes. You know, there ain't no cell phones. You got horse and buggy. But let's say you go to sleep and you have a dream of this device that is 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 a craft that goes in the air and it's almost as big as a house and it has the ability to hold people and carry people from one part of the country to the other while being suspended in the air with no strings no nothing suspended in the air flying like a bird you have this dream and you know you're astonished you say man this is some wild dream so you wake up from the dream And then you try to tell your friends, you say, man, I had the wildest dream last night. I had a dream that like 
10 tons of metal was just suspended in the air and it had people inside of this thing and it was carrying them across the, the continent and they were traveling on it. And then you say to the person, you say, I think that I could create this. Everybody that's hearing you talking, they start cracking up. They start laughing. And why are they laughing? Because you just said something that was impossible. You talk about creating a craft that's going to be suspended in the air, that people going to actually be in, and they're going to be able to fly. And to them, they laughing because that's impossible. But nothing's impossible if you have faith. What I mean is this. The dream was simply a dream of the airplanes that we have today. When you think of the concept of an airplane today, it doesn't astonish you because you, you're jaded. You've seen airplanes almost every day just flying in the sky. But about 200 years ago, not even that long ago, that concept, if you would have told it to somebody, they would have never believed uh, that that could happen because they're they're viewing it from a perspective of no faith and that's what it's like when you don't have faith you only believe the things you have experienced and the reason why it's foolish to live by anything other than faith is because uh i don't care what it is there's always more to the story who knew that a, an airplane could be possible but there was more to the story but the only way in 1600, the year 1600, you would be able to actually believe that there would be airplanes in the year 2024 is by faith, which means you would have to understand that even though I can't understand this dude's dream right now, I can tell about how he's communicating it with me and, and his excitement about him bringing this to pass. I, I just sense that this is a reality. I might not be able to see it, but I got the substance of things hoped for in this individual that's having this dream. So I'm going to work with this individual to bring this thing to pass. So what ends up happening? Let's take the Wright brothers, for example. Let's say this, this story happens in the 1600s with, with individuals that are likened unto the Wright brothers. So they get their supplies and they start, you know, creating the wings, you know, and start creating, you know, the structures. And they fail time after time after time after time, you know. But notice that faith in them is so sufficient that no matter how many times they fail, they're going to keep building the aircraft until it flies. Because that faith is sufficient um, to, to, to not quit until they see it come to pass. So faith is something, you know, faith is a thing. It's, it's not like faith is nothing. You know, when you tell people, oh, I have faith, they look at you like, uh, you just said nothing. If a person says I have faith, but they are actually having faith, they got substance. They got they, they got something. You know, the Wright brothers, let's just fast forward to the Wright brothers when they actually did invent this aircraft. They had to have faith. And notice they they their faith. The, OK, let me put it like this. What we're enjoying today as far as aircrafts and airplanes and the Boeing, you know, it's a result of somebody's faith. You see what I'm saying? So it's important for you to have faith in God. Because even though it's some things in this Bible that seem like they could never happen, it's foolish for you to stay there and think that because it's a lot of stuff that you, you don't know can happen because it ain't happened yet. Like the story of, um, well, this already happened, but I want to use this as an example of how you have to have faith when reading the Bible. When you read about Noah and the ark, and you see how all them animals fit on that boat, you know, and, and how he preserved all the animals and, and, and his family. If you're reading that with your logical brain, you don't believe that because you're not using faith. You have to use faith when you come to that story, understanding that when God had Noah create that ark it wasn't just about physical space you know God God spiritually did some things to make this a reality and the way you could know that is by using your faith because it did happen I don't care if you believe that it happened or not Noah's ark the story of Noah's ark did happen but there are aspects of that um, event 
that you don't know and you won't understand and won't grasp if you're not using your faith. You see what I'm saying? The reason I can convey it to you is because I'm using my faith. I understand. And also I have experience walking in faith with God, how the impossible becomes possible. <laughs> you know, you know, a lot of times when God does something, don't get me wrong. He does things supernaturally, but a lot of times he just, he just shows you a different dimension of the cube that you never seen. See, you thinking it's just a square, right? But sometimes what God will do in faith is show you, no, it's not just a square. I can do it this way. Turn it upside down. I can do it that way. Turn it to the other side. I can even do it this way. And you sitting there with your mind blown thinking that this, this is uh, so supernatural. And don't get me wrong. It is supernatural. But, but many times, God just knows more than you. He knows more ways of how something can work than you do. So that's why you should just put your faith in God because you're not smarter than God. Nobody's smarter than God. And when he gave you that Bible, the reason you need to believe that Bible is because God is smarter than you. And, and not only that, you know, people talk about blind faith, but real faith is not blind. Real faith can actually see. In fact, it, the Bible says anything that's done without faith is a sin in the eyes of God. Now, somebody would say, why is that? Because if you ever heard somebody say, I can't never see myself doing that. But then two years later, they're doing that. Guess what? God called that a sin. Why? Because you just said you don't you can't see yourself doing that. But here you are doing it. And whatever's not a faith, which means whatever you can't see yourself doing, if you're doing it, that means you in sin. So you have to see yourself doing whatever you're doing in order to be in the righteousness with God. That's why when you are cooperating with God, a lot of times he's going to have you decree what's about to happen before it happens to make sure that you're in faith. Because if you can say it before it happens, and I'm, I'm not talking about saying something just uh, uh, that's casual. I'm talking about something so bodacious and people looking at you like, how are you going to make that happen? You lying. Notice how David had to say to Goliath, I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to destroy the whole army behind you. He said that as a 17 year old boy with a slingshot how in the world you gonna do that he said the lord god is gonna help me do it so now boom the scene plays out he runs toward the giant slings the sling it hits him in the forehead the boy uh the giant falls down on the ground he dead then uh david cuts his head off and the whole israelite army pursues after the uh the uh, uh opposition and kills everybody notice how he had to say what he believed before God came through and carried it out why because God is operating by faith and the reason why that happened is because it was righteousness see if he if he didn't if he didn't have the faith to say it that means that that reality didn't exist inside of David so faith is a reality but it's existing inside of the person before it becomes actual actualized so there's a lot to be said about this, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm only doing 15 minutes, but this is a topic that we could talk about for a whole hour. I might have to extend this episode, man, but um, I love talking about faith because faith is a thing. And when you fill your spirit with the right things, the, the word of God, man, he can use you to do some things that you never thought was possible. You see what I'm saying? But it's all about faith and it's all about hope and it's all about believing. So you want to feed your faith to keep it alive. You feel me? I, yeah, I did call this episode Keep Faith Alive. Um, but I, I suppose we did, you know, go around the concepts about faith and, you know, how you keep it alive, you feed it. Um, but besides that, there's a lot more to keep your faith alive than what we talked about. But we're, we're coming close to our 15 minute mark, man. So this is T.O. Double. This is the 12th episode. Until next time. Peace out.